Thank you for inviting me to the 132nd big meeting here in Durham. We owe a massive debt of gratitude to Davy and all the team at the Durham Miners Association for keeping the big meeting going, for keeping the principle of the festival of the whole community going. The great traditions of the mining union and the mining industry brought together with all the other struggles and joys that we have together. When we do things together, when we're united together, we are very strong together and we change things because of that. Last year, I came to speak on a very brief visit because we were running all over the country as part of the leadership campaign for the Labour Party. And I want to say thank you very much for the great reception we had last year. And I want to say thank you because we won the leadership of the Labour Party. It was a victory for everyone who believes in a really just society. Those that believe that socialist ideas and socialism is the way forward. It was people believing things together. And I tell you this, I consider it the duty, whoever holds the office of leader of the Labour Party, to be at the Durham Miners Gala. And so we will all be here together when we have elected a Labour government in Britain. Today is about solidarity. Solidarity of the mining industry. The banners and the bands that march through the city this morning all show the struggles that so many have been through. For recognition, for safety, for justice. Those miners who died in unnecessary accidents because the greedy pit owners weren't interested in safety, only in profits they could make from the coal. So those banners are etched with sadness and with the shame of those that made so much at the expense of the lives of so many miners. And we're here also to commemorate the 1984-85 miners' strike. As Davy said, we had a solidarity movement all over the country and indeed all over the world supporting the miners in Britain. There's some unfinished business to do with the miners' strike. The unfinished business of those disfigured communities and lives that have been left alone and passed by and forgotten by the greed of successive governments, particularly the Tory governments. It wasn't just an industry they wanted to kill. It was the strength of the community coming together that they couldn't stand. That's what Thatcher, that's what the Tories really hated. And I say this, we forced them back on the question of Hillsborough. And I pay a huge tribute to all of the Hillsborough families who campaigned to get the truth and the justice. Working class communities coming together to get the truth of what happened. And those in the GMB and other unions that fought back against the blacklisting of workers because trade unionists stood up for fellow workers. And let us not forget the other big piece, piece of unfinished business the Orgreave inquiry that must and will take place. The miners' strike taught us a lot. It taught us a lot about how ordinary people living in poverty in inner city Britain, starving in mining communities, or in great trouble elsewhere in the world recognised the struggle of the mining communities and came together with support, with money, with food, with solidarity, with all of that. And so it is a great tradition of the big meeting that there are international speakers. 
and I was so pleased and I'm so proud to follow my good friend Napoleon Gomez in what he said on behalf of the miners of Mexico. He cannot go to Mexico because it's not safe for him. He's not allowed there. He leads the Union from exile. But such is the faith in him and the Union of the miners of Mexico. He is re-elected time and time again. And he gave you all a warning of what happens when big business decides it will run the trade system of the world. The enfranchisement of global corporations through NAFTA is exactly what is being planned through the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership. We don't have enemies who are working in factories and mines in the USA, in Mexico, or anywhere in Europe. They're our friends, they're our compatriots, they're the people we share solidarity with. We don't need a trade treaty that empowers global corporations at the expense of democratic governments and democratic society. Think very carefully about that and listen very carefully. Because this is about solidarity. The Tory government's tried to destroy it. And we have a choice. Do we go together in solidarity going forward to improve the lives of everyone? Or do we allow brutality to divide us? Brutality that divides us and scapegoats minorities in order to turn us in on ourselves rather than united against the forces that are trying to divide us. There is much that's very brutal in modern Britain. The way in which, by underfunding care for the elderly, many who need good quality, decent support and care don't get it because it's not there for them. Why? so many people who experienced disabilities were not only threatened with removal of their personal independence payments but also often live in deep and serious poverty unable to make the most of their lives. I tell you this, a civilised society is one that looks after and incorporates all people. We have a DWP system, a welfare system that is brutal in the extreme. This government that forces people out of their homes because the rents are too high and the benefits are too low. A government that simply doesn't care of the social cleansing it's doing in so many parts of inner city Britain and it's coming elsewhere. We defeated the Tories when they tried to take away working tax credits. Three million families are a thousand pounds better off this year because of the opposition we, all of us, the big we, mounted against it and defeated them. And this government knows a thing or two about how to try and divide people. If you took a map of modern Britain and coloured it in with the areas of greatest poverty and the areas of greatest wealth, and overlaid it with a map of the areas that have suffered the greatest cuts in support for local government expenditure with the areas that have had the least, they would be exactly the same. Yeah. The poorest areas are being cut the most, the richest areas are being cut the least. So we fight back against this as a team working together. And it was an honour last night, as it was today, to hear Tim and Dave talk about the teaching assistants and the struggles they're going through. And I echo what Davy Hopper said. Get this thing sorted, please. Because a school is a bit like a microcosm of society. A school needs cleaners. A school 
needs caretakers. A school needs admin. A school needs assistants. A school needs teachers. A school needs a head teacher. Don't divide us up. Bring us yeah. together to deliver the best of education for all of our children. This year, the economic and welfare policies of this government will drive, wait for this figure, another, another 200,000 children into poverty. The same government has presided over the increase in homelessness every single year. People tell me that uh, Labour will be very appealing when it stops talking about these kind of things and starts talking about something else. I just say this on a moral point. If you're well housed and you've got a reasonable job and you're kind of doing okay, is anyone actually comfortable stepping over a homeless person sleeping in the street on the doorstep outside your home? Are you comfortable seeing people who should be given care and support through a mental health service that often lets them down begging on our streets when they should be supported? Are we comfortable when we know there is sufficient to go round but there isn't sufficient to assuage the greed of the very rich? Are they comfortable with that in our society? You and I know the answer to that. The greatest single achievement of this movement, I believe, was the creation in 1948 of the National Health Service. Yeah. Healthcare free as a human right at the point of use for everybody. There's something humbling about going into a maternity unit in a hospital, seeing a newborn baby, and the first thing that newborn baby is given is their NHS number. Free healthcare for the rest of their lives. Doesn't happen in the USA. Sadly, doesn't happen in Mexico. It doesn't happen in many parts of the world. Because we as a movement have elevated the principle of care for all to the unitary principle that everybody should care for everybody else. Solidarity in action. It's on every banner, every poster, and the heart of every member of every union that is here today. We built the National Health Service. We brought in comprehensive education on the basis that we don't want our children divided up like sheep and goats at 11. We want our children growing up, educated together, understanding each other, understanding different contributions we can all make to a community. And it was a Labour government led by Harold Wilson and the legislation brought in by Jenny Lee that established the Arts Council and the Open University because that government believed, I believe, we believe, that education for all is a right, not a privilege. So we stand for that society that will do things in a very different way. Too many people and too many communities are being left behind in modern Tory Britain. Too many areas where skilled jobs existed, industries have, jo have died and good jobs have not been replaced. There's a lot of debate about what's happening in the Labour Party at the present time and uh, I'm inundated with questions, questions, questions all the time and I have patience that is infinite to answer questions, questions and questions. But one I got today really did puzzle me. They said, um, how are you coping with the pressure that's on you? I simply said this, there is no pressure on me.
None whatsoever. Real pressure, real pressure, real pressure, is when you don't have enough money to feed your kids. When you don't have a roof over your head. When you're wondering if you're going to be cared for. When you're wondering how you can survive. You're wondering how you're going to cope with the debts you've incurred. You're wondering if your lovely employer is going to give you a call to give you a couple of hours work or not bother or change their mind when you're on the bus on the way to do that job. That is the real pressure in our society. For those people struggling on low pay, struggling on zero hours contracts, not knowing what's coming from one week to the other, not knowing if they'll be able to pay the rent, not knowing if they're going to be homeless, not knowing if their children will end up in care. That's the kind of brutal pressure that's put on people every day of the week in this country. And when Dennis talked about Shirebrook, Dennis knows a thing or two about it. Dennis pointed out that when that was a pit, the miners worked down that pit together. Those on the surface worked on the surface together. They didn't spend their time arguing about who had which nationality, etc., etc. They spent their time producing coal, and they spent their time in solidarity with each other because there is no greater need for immediate solidarity when you're in the danger of being down a pit. And now the Thatcher government destroyed the coal industry and what's it been replaced by there? Mike Ashley, Sports Direct, people not even getting the minimum wage, hundreds on zero hours contracts and grotesque levels of danger and exploitation in a place that ought to be decent, harmonised, well-paid, unionised jobs. So if anybody says that unions don't matter, think of the parallel of the great struggle to found the National Union of Mine Workers to bring together the area associations and the way it brought about national pay bargaining and national conditions. I say to anyone who thinks a union is not for them, one day you might have an accident. Sadly, it might happen to you. One day an employer might be unreasonable towards you. You're then going to need a union. Don't wait for that day. Join now. <laughs> Dennis pointed out that after the Second World War, this country was basically bankrupt. The national treasure had been rinsed out to pay for the war. But the post-war Labour government had a different way of doing things. It said, we have to build a society where everyone matters. Therefore, an economic policy of full employment, of public ownership, of major industries, an economic policy that enabled a national health service to come around and be here for all time, council housing to be built to give people secure homes, to eliminate the worst aspects of poverty within our society. Somewhere over the past 20 years, 30 years maybe, we've kind of lost our way a bit. Neocon agenda has come along which says that all that matters is creating further levels of inequality in order that the very rich up here might be able to trickle down and the very poor down here might get a job doing something to help them out. We're told that austerity is necessary and we've all got to be punished because of the excesses of the bankers in 2008-2009. Well, I want to say thank you to John McDonnell and his team for saying what it's true, austerity is a political choice, not an economic necessity. And that we don't have to accept the rolling back of the state. We don't have to accept the rolling back 
of everything that we believe in. And we need a government that recognises the inequalities that exist within our society. Not just the big economic, economic inequalities I've talked about, but the regional ones as well. Why is it in Boston, Lincolnshire, the average hourly income is four pounds less than the national average? Why is it that there's 44 times more public investment going into infrastructure in the southeast than there is in the northeast? Why is it we have these degrees of inequality? Surely we need a government. A, a government that will bring the country together. That will invest in all the regions of the country. That will invest in the infrastructure and the industries that we need. And recognise the skills and the talents that are there for all people. So we bring people together by investing in them. We build solidarity amongst all of us. There's been some horrible, horrible incidents over the past couple of weeks in this country. Hate crime, racist attacks, attacks on synagogues, mosques, and many, many other places. An attack on a synagogue, an attack on a mosque, an attack on a church, an attack on a school, an attack on a minority is, in reality, an attack on every one of us and the kind of society in which we wish to live. Prejudice doesn't build a school, doesn't build a hospital, doesn't create a job. Prejudice and that degree of racism only encourages more prejudice, more hatred and more racism. Our movement was founded, our movement exists to bring people together in order that they could achieve justice for all, not just the few. So we invest in people's skills and you best invest in people's skills not by cutting college education or increasing university fees, instead by recognising that everybody has skills that need to be developed. And when somebody is trained as a good doctor, a good engineer, we all benefit because we all get better services as a result of that. So we need a government that invests through public investment in new technologies and new industries and has its basis on sharing wealth. We cannot be a civilized society until we eradicate the scourge of the depression of high unemployment, of underemployment, the scourge of children living in poverty, of pensioners having to choose between heating and eating in winter, of people not knowing what their hours of work will be from one week to the next. Democracy is something we fight for, something all our forebearers fought for, to gain the right to vote. There's a complete line of connection between the Great Reform Act of 1832, the Factories Act of 1840, the Education Act of 1870, the National Insurance Act of 1908, the National Health Service Act of 1948, the Equalities Act of 2010. These things happen because people are empowered through democracy. Our movement is fundamentally based on democracy and the right of our members to make a choice of the direction in which our unions, our movement and our party wants to go. We recognise our solidarity in struggle. We recognise the need to defend our human rights and the human rights of others all around the planet. So we don't walk away from international obligations on human rights. We strengthen them because strong human rights helps to prevent war and helps to prevent the disfigurement of so many people's lives. And we work for the concept of a society, a community, where everyone matters. Every child deserves security, health, education, and the ability to expand their imagination. Ours is not just 
an economic endeavor and an economic set of principles. It's about the way we live and about the genius that's in all of us. In art, in music, in poetry, in culture, in thought, in theater, in song, in dance. Look at the miners' banners today, the art that was on them and is on them. Look at the music we heard today and the genius that's within that. So our society is also about ensuring real cultural freedom for everybody to gain that expression. That's what brings us together and helps us to create a better and stronger society. Davy finished on a very important point. I was brought up to believe that our job was to do our best in our life. Our job was to try and make the world a better place during our life, that our children's generation would have a better standard of living and more opportunities than we had. And they in turn would do the same for their children. The onward march of using and harnessing science and technology for the good of all, not the enrichment of the few. And so why are so many of our young people being told, sorry, sorry, but there might not be a health service there for you. There might not be sufficient pensions there for you. You might be deeply in debt because you tried to get an education. The exciting thing about the current period in Britain, in Europe, in the United States and in many other parts of the world is that so many people reject absolutely that whole economic model and want to build a sustainable world, a culturally strong world, a world where the wealth is created and shared as a result of it. Those that fought for the miners' unions in the 19th and 20th century to gain that recognition and gain that safe working conditions and so many other things did an amazing job. And as a previous speaker said, yeah, the mines may have been closed, but that spirit, that spirit of unity, that spirit of doing things together, that spirit of community lives on in the hearts of every one of us here today at the Durham Big Meeting for the 132nd time. Thank you very much indeed.